If everyone could uh, go on mute and uh, prepare to write your questions and put them in the chat, that would be great. It is a wonderful uh, opportunity today to have another presentation by Dr. Aruna Katosh on how unique are you? Debunking the one diet fits all approach. I'm going to turn this over to Dr. Katosh now, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, learning right along with all of you. Dr. Katosh, Aruna. Thank you, Mr. Tom, and good morning, everyone. I'm so grateful that you are sharing your time with us, and I will try my best to make it worth of your time. So let's start with the topic. So the objective behind this presentation is that what is the necessity of knowing oneself? Because everybody is different in so many different aspects, but whenever we come down to having different modalities and different uh, experiences in life, we always think from generalized point of view, and whereas it has to be customized, it has to be personalized. So this is the main objective behind today's presentation, and I'm taking up the topic of digestive health. This is so important because digestive health is the key of your overall health. And in this presentation, we are going to talk about that. And if you have any question, feel free to uh, take in the chat so that we can address at the end of the session. And let's begin with this. So in today's presentation, first we are going to review the previous topic, what we discussed in our first webinar. And those who didn't get the recording of that, please give your emails in a chat. I will do the uh, needful. And then we'll be talking about the definition of health as per Ayurveda. What are the five elements? What is digestive system we are talking about today? and how these elements influence your digestive system and the common myths which we usually see in the social media, and then talking about the conclusion of today's presentation. So let's warm up this session. So I would like you to text in a chat box that, How would you describe the diet? And what does a healthy diet look like for you? Or are you a specific? Diet? Please give some answers on the chat so that I'll, I'll be aware of like what, what kind of a diet you take, how aware about uh, your diet you are and what are your thoughts on your diet because digestive system is something inside and diet is the one important factor which represents your digestive system and also influences your digestive system. Okay. Whole food is good. Okay, so it has to be tasty and healthy. Super good. Balanced. Hello. Okay. Yes. Okay, so let's start with the little uh, preview of the previous session. In last session, we talked about the peak performance and how your coding affects the performance. And we saw that built-in design of either the object or the human being directly affects their performance. And in that, we have taken the example of the automobile, that how the racing car is different from the robust Jeep. 
And when we talk about their performance, they do different tasks. And if we choose the automobile on a wrong pathway, so we wouldn't be reaching to our destination. But in today's uh, presentation, we are going inside that automobile because in last session, we saw that, you know, that there was a functionality and there was a structure. So now we are trying to go beneath that. And when it comes to Ayurveda, we, we know that, you know, this is a science of life. And when Acharya Shushu, the great saint, he describes the health, he doesn't only talk about the physical, emotional, mental, or the spiritual body. He, he's talking about your senses should be happy. They should be harmonized. Your, your mind has to be inclined. So whenever all the different factors of your body and your health are combined together to produce the happiness or the outcome of that is happiness, then you're healthy. And it is not mere the absence of disease in your body. And we did talk about that, how human being is a miniature of the universe. And what does this say? The components constituting the universe are similar with the constitution forming the body. And these are five in number, space, air, fire, water, and earth. And they are being ranked in in how how they come down to this universe. Dr. Kutu, there's a slight uh, a distortion in your voice. I, the closer you get to the mic, maybe the better. Thank there you. There you go. Sure. So in last presentation, we did talk about the journal features and that time we tried to understand these features of these five elements in terms of the performance. And today, today we are talking this in respect to the digestive system. But I want to share that how I came to this point, which is I'm talking to you today. So when I entered my medical college and in our first year as a medical students, we are always being introduced to dissection. Dissection is nothing but the opening the body and teaching the medical student the placement and the different features of the organs inside. So I would admit in my first year when I was introduced to dissection, it was my very first time I'm looking the body from inside and it didn't create much of the things inside me. The things changed when in my MD, in my master's, I was doing my master's in anatomy. And that was the time I dissected a number of the body. And that gave me a little bit of uh, thought that irrespective of 250 LB body or a 150 LB body, the size and the weight of organs are almost similar or parallel, or there might be a difference of few MGs, but not great, like what we see in the outer appearance. So the thing which changes as per the shape of the body in this digestive system is the stomach. The shape of the stomach drastically changes with the weight and the consumption of food. So here I wanted to share a few things in regard to digestive system. When you talk about the digestive system, it has two openings. One is mouth and number one is the inner opening. The input or the output of the body. And in this, there are various organs, like starting from mouth, to esophagus, the stomach, small intestine, largest intestine, and then the last outer part. And the main process in between is the in ingestion, where you take the food and the digestion starts. And then is a mechanical breakdown, which is occurring in the stomach. From breaking down the big size of uh, the food into the smaller size, the churning is happening, the grinding is happening. And then this food is introduced for a chemical digestion where a lot of enzyme and excretion comes to break down that. And then 
it is ready to get absorbed by the body. So if you see from this perspective, every human being is similar. So what is the reason that one person is allergic to dairy and other feel so good after having dairy? Why few people are have some kind of allergy where other people are good with that? And you can see that in the one family. We are not talking of different people, but you can see the variation in one family. So this particular thought led me to what I'm about to discuss in today's slides. We're still having some uh, sound distortions. Um, let me uh, give you a little bit of space to maybe find the answer for that. Um, and let me just remind all of you that while she is doing that, as questions arise, feel free to type them into the chat. I think um, we'll be able to solve this problem in a moment, but we want to make sure that you hear this very important information that Aruna is sharing with you. Let's give it a try. Talk a little bit, uh, Dr. Katosh. Yeah, you're still breaking up. And now we don't hear you at all, really, just a low roar. Um, so what is happening in in the similar shape of organs and the similar size of the digestive canal the length is same the breadth is same so what is causing these changes what is causing these kind of effects so then i started working on the cause and effect that if this kind of effect is seen, there might be some kind of a cause behind that, which is responsible for these differences in different bodies. So, and this is what we're going to talk in detail today. So here we talk about the structure and the function, the cause and the effect. The structure is the cause and the function is the effect. So if from the Western point of view, we all are having the similar kind of cell and it's constituent in it. So what could be the difference? So now I went back to what is the principle of Ayurveda? So they talk about these five elements and these five elements in different body holds different dominance. And that's how they, they differentiate one person from the another person. And when it comes down to studying property of these elements in regards to the function of that particular organ, with that, we'll able to differentiate few of the things here. So first we'll talk about this space. And I want to clear one thing here that when we are talking about these elements, I'm talking this in respect to the dominance of that element in your body. It can be the other reason that extrinsic or other in intrinsic factors are affecting this element and you might see those changes because of that and every body is healthy in its own way the only thing is that we need to listen and understand that what is our configuration and what is normal for us so i am talking all these elements in regards to these points what i said so when there is Space is dominating in your body. We discussed that last time also that the shape of the body is like this. The person will be lean. He'll be more uh, 
the, the body frame, the bones will be more prominent and their length will be more in comparison to their breadth. And when we talk about the space in the whole digestive system, so the space occupies the large intestine part till the anus. And when we talk about the specific feature in regards to the digestive system, so the journal features of space are subtle, and vivai. Vivai is a Sanskrit word which means it has a capacity to spread in the body without going through the process of the digestion. So if you are having any kind of a food article which is rich in space, so it has the probability that because of its subtleness, fineness, it will spread and show the immediate effect. And when we come down to the special features of space, so it do expansion and constriction. And when we talk in regards to the large intestine in the body, it is the place where food is being absorbed. And few of the vitamins which has been passed on because of the certain mechanism in the upper part of the digestive system, they get reabsorbed in small intestine. So intestine, that expansion and constriction movement is because of the space element present there. And sound is a very specific feature of space. I'm sorry. So now let's have a little story about the person having the space either as dominant in his body constitution or because of some intrinsic factor, the space element has been increased in that person. So this person is lean. He's a person you can sound the intestinal sound, that gurgling intestine sound is quite audible in this case. They usually have the blotting, the gases, pain, and usually the stool type in them is dry. So these are some of the issues these people face. And what is the right thing for them to do? Or if we talk about the eating style first, so because space, space is very light, it is mobile, it's not a stable element. So the appetite of this person is fluctuating. Sometimes they are really hungry, sometimes they do not feel like eating. If they are hungry and you don't give them for a certain period of time, they don't want that. The quantity of their meal, or you can say the meal portion is comparatively very small. The space is cold in its nature, so they always prefer hot or warm meals. Their speed is moderate, though space is lighter, but still the speed is moderate because as we talked in the last uh, lecture or the session that space, the person with more of the dominance is a dreamer. They always live in their own world. So because they're always occupied by their thoughts and mind, so sometimes they, they are not focused on their eating and their speed is moderate or sometimes slow. And because their quantity is small and their uh, intestine is really strong, so they need food at the short interval of time. So they need to have small meals at different frequencies. So what should be the ideal way of their eating or the do's for them is their frequency should be four to five meals in a day. They should not be the two meal or three meal person. They should always add good fat to their diet because being space has dominant feature in them, which is dry, which is porous. So they need the fat to stable or to ground the food they have eaten. Hot meals are really good for them. And if by any chance they have a significant difference in their two meals because of some reason, so they should always start with the sweet so that the lost appetite or the secretions which are too much in the system now, they get neutralized and they're able to digest food. 
And the most important point is they should eat when they are hungry. They should not wait for time or clock to that. So they must listen to their hunger carefully and eat accordingly rather than fixing their meal time. And what is a big no-no for them? Cold and chill food is not for them. Heavy, big meal is not for them. Grilled food is not for them because if you see the grilled food, uh, in most of the grilled food, the temperature of uh, cooking is higher and it dehydrates that food, what we are cooking as a drilled. And most of the oil which is present within that food is being lost in this process. So again, it goes to more of the dryness in that food. So it is a big no-no for them. Raw food is a big no for them. Like if they are having a lot of salads and other things which is not cooked because their digestive fire cannot deal with the raw and the thing which need more efforts to digest the food. And the other point is they should avoid combining different food categories. When we talk about the food categories here, I'm talking about whenever it comes to a big meal you have you might have seen like even in my plate the perfect plate planning you see the carbohydrate protein fats fruits nuts everything is there but when it comes down to space they need to understand that their digestive fire has some kind of a level it is it is more like cooking on a sim or a low gas so if they can avoid these things they can maintain their digestive system without any external help our next element is air again the person with air dominance is almost similar like the space element person, but the basic difference between both of them is that the person with dominance of air element cannot stand still. Even if that person is sitting in a very serious meeting, their hands, their foot, some of the body part is definitely moving, which is not seen with the space element person. So air is all about movement here is all about direction here is all about impulse which is not in space so though they are combined together in ayurveda and they are talked together in ayurveda but when you go deep into the text they did have talked about the differences of these the dryness and the cold and the rough touch is a feature journal feature of air whereas impulse movement is the special feature of air and touch is the very, very special uh, feature of air and person with more of the air dominance in their body type. When you touch them or their body temperature is comparatively less than the other element dominant personalities. And let's see what kind of a person uh, have more of the air dominance in their digestive system or in their body. So usually they have either loose stool or constipation. Why this is so? Because when food is stored for a long time in the large intestine, the water is reabsorbed back. So more the stool is dry, the more the time it has spent in the large intestine part. On the contrary, if the stool is loose, that means it has not get that much time or appropriate time so that the re reabsorption of water and different vitamin and minerals go back. So again, what this depicts, this depicts the different movement of large intestine. Now, I want to differentiate the expansion and constriction is different from the movement. And this is the basic difference. And when you go deep down talking to them, you can differentiate these things. Gas, bloating, these things are again common in both the personalities. Appetite 
in eating style, the appetite is fluctuating because air is also not stable. So sometimes it is more, sometimes it's moved to the other parts. So their quantity or meal portion is also less. They do like the hot meals, but their preference for fried food is much more than in comparison to the space dominant person. Their speed is a significant point because comparatively they eat faster than the rest of the elements. And because they eat less quantity, so they need food in short interval of time. So they also need to take the same precaution as we talked in the space element that the frequency should be four to five meals. They should add good fats into their meals. They should eat hot and fresh food and they must eat when they are hungry. And when it comes to the avoiding factors, so cold, chilled, big and heavy food, grilled food is a big no-no for them. And the long interval is something which can affect their digestion because there is one condition in which the air is trapped between the two fecal material. And this is a time when the person do not feel like eating, their stomach is bloated, but they have a feeling that they should eat something. So this usually happens when the air dominant person eats after a long interval of time or person with air dominance is talking a lot while he's eating. Now let's go to the third element, which is the fire. The shape of the body is very much different from the space and air dominant person. This person is quite proportionate. The bodybuilders are in this category. They, their bodies are strong, stout, their muscles are prominent. And the similar thing is seen in the females also. When we talk about the dominance of fire in this digestive tract, so small intestine is a place where the fire is dominant in complete digestive system. And when we talk about the general characteristics, so the temperature, and the sharpness of fire is really important when we talk about the digestive system and digestion. Transformation is a very special characteristic when we talk about the fire. And what kind of a common issue the person see when it has more of a fire dominance in the body, acid reflex is very common. And acidity, hyperacidity, tendency for the inflammation is very common. And when the fire is at peak or it, it crosses its limit, they might find blood in their urine and stool too. And what would be the eating habit of this person? He's very good with the appetite. He's the one who is always hungry. Like whenever you ask in your team, like, uh, should we eat? And this person is like, oh yeah, let's order it. So he is one with the dominance of fire. The quantity is always more than the rest of the people because of the good appetite. They can digest any kind of a food. They usually don't like hot food. They either eat room temperature or a warm food, but they have a specific liking towards the spicy food. Their speed is fast, but it is not as fast as the air dominant person because of the high appetite and good digestive system. They need food at short interval of time. So what they should do, they can also have a frequency of three to five meals. They should also add fat. In previous two cases, the fat was necessary because of the dryness. They need to settle it down. They need to reduce the move, um, the friction in the digestive tract to come down. But in case of fire, the fire is so high that it 
dehydrate and demoisturize the cells that comes in contact with. So here, fat is doing more of a lubrication, but from the fire perspective, warm and fresh foods are good for them. They are the one who can have salad and the raw stuff in their diet. And they should always start with the sweet. In last two cases, we said if they exceed their normal meal time, they should start with the sweet. But fire people are always hungry. Their excretion levels are comparatively more than the rest of the four categories. So if they are starting with the sweet, what sweet going to do in this case, they're going to neutralize the excessive excretion. The acidity of HCL in the stomach is being neutralized by the sweet content. And that's how they will eat the portion which is required by the body and their appetite is not being influenced by the high, fi high fire because fire when goes uh, out of its range, it goes two ways. Either it's burning high or it goes to like you're cooking on a hot water. So in both the cases, when the fire is too much, the tendency of burning the food is more. Whereas if the fire level is like a hot water, the food you are cooking over that has to have some kind of a limitation. You cannot cook all kind of a food on uh, hot water. So it is really important that you should maintain the digestive fire and add little sweet to that so that you can maintain your body without having any extra effect. So the taste, which is good for them and taste when I'm talking, I'm talking of the food category. They are taking the veggies, the fruits they are adding in their food. If the food is more dom dominant with sweet, bitter and astringent taste, that is favorable for the person with having the dominance of fire. Yes, the big no for the fire is skipping their meals and especially lunch because lunch is the time when sun is at peak and that's how our excretion in the digestive system at peak. So they should not skip their meals and especially the lunch. They should not take too spicy, salty and sour things because that gonna affect the quality of fire in their body. Too much fat is not good for them. And fermented food is also not good for them. Let's come to the next element, and this is water. Now, the shape of uh, the body shape of the fire and water is little different because now more of a density started coming to the body in the previous three categories, they were not as dense as the water and earth. So now the body will be little on a bulkier side. When it comes down to the dominance of water in the digestive tract, so it is always the upper part of the digestive system, which is the mouth, the esophagus, and the stomach. The general feature of water is the mobility, Sticky and slimy, correct? It, it is more sticky than slimy. And when we talk about the special features, lubrication is the main feature of the water element and they dominate the gastric buds and the gastric system. So the water dominance has more control over the taste. The common issue they, they, they face is burping, bloating, they feel excessive slurvation, nausea tendencies are there if the food is not being digested properly. They feel sluggish after having food. If, if the food is a little bit more than the required or the daily quantity, they feel lethargy after that. And they are little prone to the allergies in comparison to the other elements. And their eating style, the appetite is low, but they do tend to take more quantity. They have more preference towards the cold and the speed of eating is slow. 
they usually skip the meal because they eat more in one meal and then they don't feel like eating in next meal. So when we come down to the frequency of their meals in a day, two to three meals are good for them. It depends upon their profession or the work style. They should avoid excessive fat in their diet. If they want to have that should be limited in certain quantity. They don't have a liberty of eating fat like previous three personalities. Warm and fresh meals are good for them. They can start with the appetizer and then they can lead towards the main meal. And the taste which is good for them is bitter, little spicy and astringent. Again, they should not skip the meal because if they are skipping the meal, they have a tendency towards uh, the burging and nausea. So fat and fermented food is again not good for them. And here I just want to mention that whenever we talk about the fermented food, the media is liquid, the media is some kind of a liquid. And when the water is dominant in your body, so tendency of the process like fermentation is much more faster than in the rest of the four elements. And then the last one is earth. These people are really strong. They look strong in their appearance and the way they walk, everything shows the dominance of earth in them. But when we talk about the digestion, again, the site of the dominance of earth is same, the upper track of the digestive system. The general feature of earth is it's dense, it's heavy, where a special feature is the stability. And when we talk about the five senses, smell is the one which is dominant in the earth element. Now, if you have to visualize this person, this, this is a big, big person, like, you know, you, you can think about a Hulk in this case. So because their digestive fire is not really good, but they eat more. So they have a tendency towards having that irritable bowel syndrome. They usually feel lethargy when they eat big meals. Their body temperature is comparatively cold. We have seen this cold temperature of the body in air dominant person also, but this is different and you can differentiate with the help of the shape of the body. And this doesn't mean that the air or the earth dominant personalities cannot be obese, but the reason of obesity in all the five elements are totally different, but they do have a tendency to go towards a different body shape than their natural ones. So when we talk about the eating style, it is almost similar as that of water. And the do's for them is also very much parallel. The only thing is they should avoid the dry food. In case of water, the body has a lot of, I would say the water component. So it doesn't matter even if the food is dry, but when it comes down to the earth element, the breakdown of that food becomes difficult if they are having too much dry food in their meals. And when I talk about dry food, I'm not saying dry fruit, I'm saying dry food. And when we talk about the dawn's Heavy food is a big no. Too much sweet and sour is not good for them. Oily, processed and frozen food is not for the earth dominant person. So with this, we come to an end. And now I want to give you the analogy. What Ayurveda has given in its one of the very beautiful chapter that in Ayurveda, the seers have given the example of day-to-day -day life so that you can think, you, you can correlate the thing. And why did I put this uh, like a part on, on a different kind of a stove, which is not there? Because I want to emphasize that we have all these technical benefits in the outer 
side of the life. It is not inside our body. Inside the body, the mechanism is still the same, which the primitive people used to do it. And whatever time you're cooking outside, Inside the body, it is going to take five to six times more to digest that food. So these are the two points. And if you see on this side, this pot represents the shape of the stomach. And definitely the upper part of the body is the open end of this container where the things has been put inside the container. And if you see this, this brick structure outside. This is the large intestine over here. And the fire inside is the small intestine. Let's try to understand this when we talk in the beginning about those four steps. So large intestine is the surface beneath the stove, which get heated because of the fire in the stove, but it does not have the capacity to digest like it, like the fire. So the main process of digestion is always inside the last part of the stomach and the small intestine. And as you have seen, if, if there is a drop of water fallen on the surface beneath the stove, it can Try it so easily, but it doesn't have the capacity to digest that. So I just want to show this again that how the fire inside that large intestine is one which is cooking the food. And if you see on the other side, it is very much the representative of the same thing. And we should always remember this thing that what is the duration of cooking that food outside and multiply it by four or five. And that is the time it, it's gonna take inside your small intestine to get digested. And here I'm not talking about the procedure where we start from ingestion to the elimination out of the elimination of the waste product out of the body but I'm just talking here about the cooking time in between the time in the small intestine. So what am I trying to say and what is healthy digestion? Everyone is blessed with their own body type and their own uniqueness. So the main point here is that one should eat according to their body constitution. Let your appetite be guided by it. Let your meal be guided by your appetite, and it should not be as per the watch that now this is two o'clock, this is a lunch time, this is eleven o'clock. Let's have some some kind of a snack. So follow the appetite, follow the hunger, and your digestive system will maintain itself. And yes. The external factors do affect your digestion, so one should follow the guidelines of eating as per their body constitution. And definitely, if you're working with any of the health coach, he or she will definitely guide you towards that. Okay. Consequences if you are not having a good digestion. So when your metabolic efficiency is being compromised because of the any factor, it will lead to the undigestive metabolic waste because it's not being digested. And if this undigested metabolic waste is staying in your body for a long duration, it turns into the toxin. And this Toxic substance is the you're, one. This is really important, and you're breaking up again. So I'm not sure what it is you can do, but uh, we want to hear okay. this part. Let me repeat this again. So, what are the consequences if your digestion is not up to the mark? So, the metabolic, whenever the metabolic efficacy is being compromised, it leads to undigested metabolic waste. And when this waste product is lacking in your body for a longer duration, it turns to toxins. 
toxins when you get planted in the body for say a certain like in a certain level it creates it creates lifestyle disorder it creates so many different discomforts in the body which can easily be tackled by just improving your digestive system There are like journal guidelines for everyone that eat when you're hungry, always eat in a calm and comfortable place. Do not eat while you are driving. If you, if you just set one trend or one point for you that eat in a nice plate, eat on a, 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 with a nice crockery, it will create that comfort and calmness that you are eating. Because I, I read this in one of the article, only the human beings are the one who eat and start going back or running back to their work. None of the other beings in this universe start working or running around after they eat. They always sit down to let it work and not go back to the work. And always read eat in right quantity and quantity should be as per your body constitution and always be mindful when you are eating so that you should know that when you need to stop what kind of a effect this food is giving to you and if you are eating fast you are in a hurry you are not calm your mind is somewhere else definitely you will not be mindful and the food you are putting into your body, maybe you are using your body just as a trash bin and not using it for what is it is meant for. And then the points to consider, and I would say that the common myths, because nowadays, which is very common is have sprouts, have smoothies, replace your meal with the sprouts and smoothies. So I just want to give one thought behind this is that if the appetite is very good, go ahead with the raw food. If not, let your digestive system work according to its strength and eat cooked food and not the raw food. So this is the biggest difference between the two because somehow the complicity of the raw food is being simplified by the way of the cooking. And in every culture, depending upon their feather, their uh, environment, their way of cooking is different. So, but the main point is to simplify that food for the body to digest it. And the other thing which I have heard a lot is stop eating fat after you cross 40. Why? One, your body is not producing more of the lubrication in the body because that's the body's mechanism. And even if you are not giving a good fat to your body, definitely the friction will be more, your joints will be suffered. And most of the person with air and space dominance, if they don't add fat into their diet in significant amount, they lend up into constipation and other dis digestive discomforts or disorders. And nowadays people are into so many diets and they, they skip their meal. They, sometimes it is protein high, sometimes it is carbohydrate high. So we need to understand what they are doing inside the body. If you're not having carbohydrate from the whole grains, do you think any other food gives you the fiber, which the fibers from the cereals come into your food, that husky material, which scrubs the intestine, which, which makes the system move accordingly because this friction is also important for the stimulation of the intestine so that it, it should move. So everything has importance in the diet. And my point here is 
know your thyself because there is a interplay going on between the universe and yourself. The universe has created you for a very specific reason. And that is the reason why certain elements are dominant in your body. And if you are listening to your body and you are acting according to your body, there is much more probabilities of having the higher wellness and a higher healthier and the longevity in your life than going against your body. Eating mindful, like mindful eating is so important. For me, the food has to be the five sensory experience. Your, your eyes should enjoy, your tongue should enjoy, your hands should feel good, the presentation of the food. And if you're eating the food in that way, don't you think food will gonna tell you that am I good for you or just eat me in certain proportion? You might get be fascinated by the beauty of ice cream because I usually get, you know, ice cream is my weak point. But when you are in your mindful zone, when you are in a fair zone that why you are eating what you're eating, then definitely you're going to put the right amount. And with this, you can have a luxury of having different food, but you know at what time you are having that thing. And the most important thing, do not get yourself literate by the media literacy. This is so harmful. And that is the reason why I have started with this. Know your thyself, use your discernment that what is good for you. Let the commercial speak their tone, but they should not be overcoming your thoughts. So this is the main point I wanted to conclude with. And definitely when we are talking about the internal and external factor, yes, they do get affected by the season. And that is how the universe is interplaying with the elements inside the body. And with this, I would like to say thank you for the patience listening and let your digest system or your gut health be at its optimal level and thank you so much and I do offer the free 20 to 30 minute uh, consultation sessions if you want to know more about your digestion and this is the way you can contact me and I can help you to help yourself with this I'm open to for the question and answer sessions Thank you so much, Dr. Katosh. Yes, I agree with Nancy, clapping hands uh, is, is appropriate. I I think we could go to full screen. So we see your face big and there we go. And if you want to, any of you want to ask question on full screen, uh, raise your hand and we will uh, recognize you or type them in. We have a couple of questions that were already typed in. Um, by the way, uh, if you put your uh, email address, your name in the chat, we'll capture that. We'll make sure you get a, a copy of the link to this presentation. If for some reason that falls through, use uh, Dr. Katosha's email address that she posted and send her an email and ask for the link and ask for more information. Um, so here is... Uh, Really, it's a confirmation kind of question. So slow cooked food will have very high digestion time. And then so the amount of time it takes to cook food is indicative of the time we need to digest the food. Digestion time is three to four times cooking times. You want to uh, address those? Uh, can you just uh, like uh, break the question? So I'll break it up. Slow cook food. Is slow cook food um, does that call for a higher, a very high digestion time? Okay. Now there is a difference because if you are correlating that with in reference to the slow cooker, I does not mean that thing. I'm just saying, like you know, just think about 
if you're not cooking in a microwave with a very high temperature, if you're cooking that food in at certain temperature over the fire, how much time it's going to take? And then multiply because nowadays we have so many gadgets to put, which made her, our cooking so easy in comparison to like, you know, the, the, I would say the last 30, 40 years. But the thing is that this also confused our mind with how that has been cooked and the, how that is being metabolized inside the body. Because the, when I showed that analogy, I wanted to sh make an image in your mind that how the food is being metabolized inside is very similar with the food we are cooking outside. Ah, so that was an analogy. The language is different. The language is yeah. different, but the process going on is very much similar. That's why I, I gave an example that pot, the big pot represents the stomach, the fire represents the small intestine, and the large intestine is more like a surface on which the fire or the stove is there to cook inside that pot. Thank you for that. Um, I think that pretty much addresses the second question to about the amount of time indicative of the time needed to digest. Um, you're having a lot of compliments in here. Uh, I'm, I'm scrolling for questions. Uh, someone said, uh, I recognize myself in more than one category. Now this is a very good question because I remember when I took abnormal psych in college, I diagnosed myself with every psychological malady on earth. But are we, are there combinations of these? Um, yes. If so, what are the common combinations? Yes, that, that, that's a beautiful question. And um, I would have told this if nobody has asked me this thing, because I just wanted, you know, I have this teaching background and, you know, you are also a teacher that you always look that, you know, the other one is listening or not. So I just talk about the dominance of element one element in the body, but they are always present in the combination. And it's not like that one element is dominant and the rest of the four are absent. It's not like that. They are always in proportion, but here we are talking about that in reference to one, because when it goes down the combination, we categorize them into nine, but when we go to the subcategory, there are numerous combinations. Any word on solar cooking that came up? Solar cooking would be slightly, it again depends. If you're cooking in summer, it is exact the way the things are going inside. And if your fire is at its optimal level. But if you're talking about the winter and any other season, we cannot talk about the solar cooking there. Okay. Um, Overlap to Parkinson's coming from uh, air excess. That's uh, a question. Do you, uh, you have anything to, any what literature on the, that? What is the question? Is Parkinson's uh, originating from air ex excess? Yes. In Ayurveda, when we talk about the condition, this straight away comes in a condition where the air element is severely vitiated in one person. So this is directly related with the excess or the vit vitiation of air element in the body. Fascinating. Um, any other questions coming up? Aruna, I have a quick question. In one of the last three slides, mm -hmm. you mentioned about getting to the right quantity of food. Mm -hmm. If we are new in our journey of starting out and having awareness of our body, what would you say are the one or two things we should keep in mind as we think through what is the right quantity that we are taking with each meal <clears throat> when i talked about the different element and the different uh, element dominant personality and their eating style there there i was giving a hint of their normal lifestyle and it doesn't go 
with the age we we get modified to our lifestyle but mm-hmm. since since we are born we have a certain kind of a pattern towards our eating habit i'll give you an example of my son right he he is a toddler and since he was born he never had his milk in one time if you are even giving him 30 ounces or 60 ounces he is the person he'll drink he'll take a break and that break is not in seconds it's in minute and then he will take again and when he grew up he started walking so his bottle is sitting and he is roaming around and he'll come and he'll drink so because i know his body type right i never forced him to drink in one go so this mm. is something which is with you since your your childhood it is nothing you cultivated but because of your lifestyle the timings you have changed it yourself but if you go back and look to the childhood what kind of a habits you had that time you can have a clear cut view on this that what kind of a digestive system you had or what kind of a habits were there which represent the dominant element in yourself okay okay yeah so you talked about um, being present being aware being mindful as a way of silencing all the other voices and listening to what your body is telling you yes because this is an excellent time uh, when you can go inside other, other than the other practices you do because i can say on my behalf or on behalf of the people who are foodie those who love their food this is a kind of meditation if you are doing you need not to go for extra 20 or 15 minutes to go for that if you are doing that with your full 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 like i would say the 100% into your food that is again uh, you know aligning yourself with your own self and listening and acting accordingly thank you there was a follow up to the parkinson's question that you uh, addressed um does that overlap to the nervous system um yes in ayurveda uh, when we talk about uh, you froze is am i audible now now you are okay so in ayurveda the nervous system is discussed under the air dominant personality the space is there there's there's a more of combination of air and space and when you look on to that person's body constitution you can see and you can find the causative factors behind that condition because the similar dominant person doesn't always have the same thing it always is affected by their lifestyle by their work what kind of a habits they have and yes nervous system is mainly controlled by the air and space element in the body as per ayurveda another good question has come up what does it mean to eat according to the sun does that mean to notice when I, whether i'm hungry yes this is a great question and this is this question is in in regards to the circadian rhythm that there are different types of circadian rhythm we talk day and night the 15 days of moon and then the month and then the different seasons in the year and when i say that you know put the sun in place of your watch or a clock i mean to say when sun is in the sky and the position of it matters because that's the main source from the universe in regards to the fire which is supporting the element of fire inside your body so that is the reason that the lunch time you can eat variety of food you can add different food categories in one meal because this is assumed that in around 12 to 2 pm 12 noon to 2 pm the sun is at peak and that's how your digestive system is at optimal place where it can digest anything whereas if you eat the same food 
after the sun in your dinner, like say about the sun sets around seven. So you are eating the same food in the eight. You can see the difference in the digestion of both. That is the reason I always say that always eat according to the sun. And if that is a rainy day and it's 12 o'clock, please mind it, sun is not outside. So eat accordingly. So let sun be the guiding force for the proportion of meal in your diet and not the clock or the timing of yours. Excellent. Do you recommend 16 hour fasting meals? Yes, they, this is uh, like very popular nowadays. And it again depends if person with more of the water in the dominant personality is doing this, it is great for them. But if a air and space element person is doing this, that can lead to certain complication in their body. So it is really important that you should not be influenced by the information. Information is always good. How we take it and how we apply it, it may not be the appropriate place to use that. Do you uh, find that um, that the blood sugar responds to these patterns differently in different people? For instance, if someone experiences hypoglycemia and um, they can relate it to their diet or when they ate or how yes. they ate. Yes, because there are two factors when we talk about the sugar. One is how that food article is affecting the glycemic index inside the body. And when we talk about the fructose or the other sugar component, it, it definitely has the higher glycemic index. It means it has a tendency of fluctuating the sugar at much more rate than the other. And the second factor which is involved behind the sugar is again where the digestion come. And that is the reason why diabetes is considered under the lifestyle syndrome because it is related with the metabolism. Whatever kind of a food you are having at the end of that reaction or that process, the outcome comes in a form of a glucose. So if that mechanism is being hampered by any of the reasons, yes, you will be able to see that changes in your diet or in your blood work. Super. Uh, we um, have a question here about people who maybe not because they want to, but because they have to um, work uh, late night shifts, graveyard shifts, we call them here sometimes, uh, the midnight shift, uh, their work schedules are really out of sync with their circadian rhythms, what mm -hmm. kinds of effects and maybe some suggestions for people or in that position. Right. So when we talk about the circadian rhythm in terms of 24 hours, when so there's 12 hours a day and 12 hours a night, so they are further dominated by these elements at different places. And when we talk about uh, 10 a.m. to 2 a.m., that is a time when the fire is at its dominant. And similarly, when it comes to nighttime, 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. is a time when fire element dominates again. But the difference between the two is the absence of sun in, in the 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Uh, zone. Yes, even if you're awake at that time, you will feel hunger. And anybody who has uh, like, you know, be awake in this particular zone, they might have felt the same kind of a hunger when they feel in the morning. But this fire is not as optimal as the morning one. And if you are going through that phase, eat in this window, but you have to make your food very light. Because somehow this is not recommendable. They have to do it. So they have, need to be more precautionate in terms of their food and how their digestion going to help. And they may take a help of, uh, you know, a person who can help them with their digestion because in this case, they definitely need a support from outside that they can add certain things at that time that that food should be digested in the body. This is really where uh, good coaching 
can be very helpful to get into the specifics of it. How do you eat during the day when you're, how do you, how do you uh, overcome some of these obstacles? I think we're almost out of time, Dr. Katosh. Uh, you are uh, a magnificent teacher. And I know that I have learned so much today from you. Thank um, you. Hopefully we've been able to capture our pictures of people. If you want to turn on your cameras and everybody smile at once, uh, that would be great. We get a few of you anyway. And uh, thank you so much, uh, all of you who stayed around today. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next month. I think we have a pattern now, don't we? Uh, yes, uh, yes. It will be third Saturday of uh, every month, and it will be near to 11 o'clock. Okay. Look Aruna, for... I look forward to future presentations. I find them very valuable and very, very helpful. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank for you, what Dr. Kadoj. It was very thank informative, you so much. very valuable thank information. You. Thank you. Thank you for your Look time. for uh, the link in your email. Uh, if for some reason you don't find it, write to, uh, go ahead and type your, um, your email address again in the chat, if you could, doctor. And then um, if you, uh, still can't find it. Uh, you're connected yeah. to our uh, coach on uh, the uh, on social media. We, we will be posting uh, this video over the weekend, trying to get yes. it in. Very enlightening, uh, highly enlightening session. Thank you, Dr. Kadoch. Thank you. Anybody else have any closing words they want to say? No, just thank you very much. Yeah, it was good information and uh, really enjoyed uh, yeah, learning new things and certain things. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for your time. I really appreciate that. We're going to hang behind and learn from our, uh, from our successes and also from a couple of glitches. So uh, all of you can well, either go to bed. Yeah. Next time, I'll be more prepared. She was very, you were very well prepared. It's just that we had some, we had some technical issues and we're going to try to figure out how to solve them. Sure. Maybe go to microphone. Just <laughs> yeah, might help. Yeah. Send, send your suggestions on over. <laughs> All right. Thank sure. you. Again. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your time. I'll have a few. Folks, don't be offended. I'm going to help some of you out in case you've already gone out for coffee. Yes. Is Kanta you? No, not me. My mom. Oh, your mom. Well, don't be offended, ma'am. Yes, yes. No, no, you can you can just go ahead with that. <laughs> okay, we just have uh, two Jess Spreets, one Aruna, and one Tom left. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was really good. Uh, 
I don't know what the microphone says. I think I think whoever said get a microphone, that might be the answer. No, I'm I'm not having microphone next time. And these two devices are making me so conscious because I'm he hearing double voice. Okay, not one that's, voice. Yes. That's probably it. Um you know what? We could we'll figure this out. Mm -hmm. Might be that you know we can do two screens um, on the same device. Um, we just have to. There's a, there's an answer to this problem, mm -hmm. but uh, you solved it, and the content came through, and people were certainly engaged. Um, let's see. Your uh, friend Vipan, is he a relative of yours? Who? Uh, V-I-P-A-N, Sarain? Vipan, yeah. Lots of good questions. Oh, uh, yeah. He's a scientist, so. Oh. Well, he's, um, he also seems very concerned about Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. um, I hope he's not struggling with that, but many people do. You have, um, boy, that was, I mean, I learned so much. How about you, Jespreet? Jespreet, did you go for coffee? <laughs> or tea? Seems to me. <laughs> uh, questions for me, Aruna? No, no, no. I, I think we need to figure it out this way, like, you know. How are you um, feeling right now? I'm feeling good. I think prayer, prayers help me, like, you know, having the better channel of energies through me. I keep on reminding myself, you know, you are just the instrument. You are just the instrument. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah. But I'm definitely better than I was. When one you started? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's, you know, one of the things about problems, like glitches, is that when you get to overcome them, I don't know, there's another kind of energy that kicks in that you know, oh, okay, everything that could go wrong did go wrong, and here I am, and we survived, and it still worked out. Yep. And we're not subject to our circumstances. Mm -hmm. so. And we are learning in every step. So I would say it was nice, like, you know, doing is more important than looking on to all the things which didn't went well. Yeah, but we ended with one asset. <laughs> you had about twenty nine, including all of us. Mm -hmm. So that was two more than last time. Mm -hmm. So you had growth. Mm -hmm. Here's something you can do if you want to have a product that is um, that doesn't have the glitches. We could record one just straight without an audience and then combine the question and answer period mm -hmm. at the end of that one. And it would it would not, you know, if you want a permanent one later on, I wouldn't do that right away. We can, we can do one thing that uh, I live. You're frozen. It's a good picture, but you're frozen. No, is it better? You froze for a minute. You said we could do one thing. I think that was my connection. So okay. I'm saying like, you know, we can do one thing. I heard that. But if the recording is good, it's good. Otherwise, we can record it again on Friday. Okay. We'll take a look at it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, you'll so be much. looking at your recording today. I'll be looking at mine. Mm -hmm. uh, I probably, um, I probably won't get to doing any editing till tomorrow, just no because problem. I've got some stuff I've got to do. Got a lot of great comments. Hopefully you've got those saved and you'll be able to. Yes, I did save the chat. Okay. 
I'll see you next week. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.